Hey guys, welcome back to Caleb's Fish Corner. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a wire change on a bare bottom tank and a tank that has new decorations and new substrate, just fish in it. And I'm going to be doing it by using a submersible pump and hose to pump water outside the aquarium. And then I'm going to fill it up using a wire chain system like a python or an aquarium that connects to your faucet. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Maybe you'll learn something. Stay tuned. All right, guys. You can kind of see that the water in this 100-gallon aquarium is quite, it's kind of tinted. It has a little bit of like an orange tint to it. It almost looks like your black water aquariums. But the reason why this water is this collar is because I had the bigger fish in here, like this Oscar and a couple iridescent sharks. But I feed them the jumbo mini large floating sticks from Tetra. And it's a really good food. Besides the fact that it likes to stain the water. If I open this up for you guys. You can tell that the pellets are kind of orange. And as you're feeding it, it actually starts to make the water gets kind of this dingy look to it and I'm gonna try running carbon to see if it'll actually clear it up but I gotta do a water change on this tank anyway I gotta clean the glass and drain out at least 50 percent of this water or so and then I'll fill it back up with fresh clean water alright guys the submersible pump that I'm gonna be using for this water change is a fluval submersible pump that usually comes in like their specs or the uh, 15 gallon flexes or whatever they are and this is usually what they actually use to run their filtration but I've actually took one of the tanks that had broke and I took out the submersible pump and that's what I've been using to change water in bare bottom aquariums that way I don't have to use water to just suck out water. I don't have to gravel back because there's nothing on the bottom. And the type of fish and filtration and the setup actually keeps the debris from completely settling on the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this pump down into the water of the 100 gallon aquarium and run the tubing outside the house and this pump will pump out the water from the aquarium and I can use that water to clean the sponges that I have inside of the hang on the back filter and then I'll use the water change system that hook up to your faucet to put water back into the aquarium Now I'm just taking this mag float and it allows me to clean the inside of the tank's glass from detritus and mold and stuff like that that will build up on the surface without getting my hands wet. And it's really nice to have one of these mag floats to where you don't have to get your hands wet. You don't have to dip your hands in to scrape off the algae. and They're a really good way to clean your tanks if you don't want to get water everywhere. Is It's just a magnetic base while well, this thing's floating around. Well, now it's floating away from me. You can actually get it to come towards you if you didn't already put it in the water. I reach my hand in here a little bit and I just give it a knock over. You can use the thing. Well, maybe.
and it'll just attach itself. And then as you're dragging it, it'll clean the stuff off of your aquarium. All right, guys. As you can see, I do have the submersible pump just kind of hanging halfway down in the aquarium. And once that's doing it, it's, it's pumping water out of the aquarium through this tube. And this tube is going outside, and it's now starting to drain the tank. Now, when you're draining the tank, you want to make sure you turn off your filter and your heater. That way, it does the heater doesn't get exposed to the heat without water to help keep it cool. So that way when you fill the tank back up with water, it's not going to explode. And you also want to turn off your filter, that way you're not running your filter dry without water in it and causing your filter there to heat. This is Medusa. She was the Oscar in that's been in this tank. I've had her for about a, over a, about a year and a half probably. But these fish were all in that 100 gallon disaster tank video. And they're doing really good. The iridescents are starting to get big. I have plans on building a couple thousand gallon aquarium for the iridescents. And then, of course, the 100 gallon just probably stay for the Oscar. But they're all doing really good. They're all healthy. The Oscar is one of my favorite. It follows me no matter where I go. These fish are just phenomenal. This is the Aqua Clear 500 size of what the lid says. But this is what I'm using to filter this aquarium. And it's a rather big filter. It has plenty of media space in it. This is the intake where it's adjustable. You can slide it that way, slow down the flow, or you can increase it. And it has a big AquaClear 110 sponge filter that I have running for my beneficial bacteria. And as you can see, there's a little bit of detritus and gunk and fish poop that is now collected on this sponge. And all you got to do is to remove it is you just have to grab the basket and pop it out of its thing and it lifts up out of there and as you can see the sponge isn't completely dirty but it's also not clean so what you want to do is take this to where your water is coming out of your aquarium and clean it off using that all right, guys, as you can see, I got the sponge out of the 100-gallon aquarium, and you can tell how dirty it is. And I have the water coming out of my aquarium, coming out right here. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use it to rinse off the sponge. That way, I am using the water from the aquarium so it's safe on the beneficial bacteria. It's not going to kill it off. Now this water, you will kill some beneficial bacteria by disturbing the sponge. But that way you can actually get the, uh, the newer bacteria, the stronger bacteria to grow. And you get rid of the old ones. So you have the most efficient bacteria that you can have. And all you got to do with these sponges is you just have to run the water over it that way you don't kill your bacteria that needs the oxygen and you just keep squeezing the sponge until you get most of the junk out and the water coming out of the sponge when you squeeze it is relatively clear now you won't be able to get everything out of the sponge 100 percent but this will help clean up the sponge quite a bit. And just by having this water be able to run over top of the sponge, you're keeping that bacteria full of oxygen and you're using the tank water that this bacteria has grown in. 
And that way, you know, it's not like you're dumping cold water or hot water on it. And you just got to work the sponge until it's, until it's clean. And that's it. As you can tell, the sponge looks a lot cleaner than what it was when I took it out. And now I got to do is reinstall this back into the aquarium. Like I showed you out in outside when I was cleaning this filter off, all I got to do now is reinstall this filter back in, well, the sponge back into the filter. And that's just as easy as taking that basket and taking the sponge and sticking it down at the bottom of it and reinstalling the sponge and reinstalling the basket. Now, another thing that I like to use is the, it doesn't have to be this brand, but it's the bonded filter pads that have like a blue outside and a white side. And you can also get the ones that are green on one side and pink on one side and all that. And what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll cut it to where it'll fit in this basket. And this will help do the this will help filter the fine particles out of the water. And then I will get a bag of carbon ready that I will stick in here. And that way I have my full filtration. So let me get this set up and then we'll go from there. As you can see, I got that floss put into this basket. And it's sitting on top of the uh, on top of the um, sponge. And that sponge will catch out the big debris and have the beneficial bacteria do it and turn the ammonia to nitrate and well nitrite and then nitrite to nitrates and then this this filter floss is going to filter out the fine particles of the water and giving it the clear look with no debris floating and then there will be carbon sitting on top of that and that will take out organics and chemicals out of the water now that the aquarium is done being drained, I can now attach my python unit, which is using a big long hose that attaches to the sink adapter. And this will actually thread onto the sink. I already put the adapter piece for my faucet on. And all you gotta do is make sure you don't cross thread it, but you just gotta thread it on. Position the hose piece to the direction you need it to be and make sure you tighten up that thing so you don't leak it has a rubber gasket on the inside and this piece right here down at the bottom it if you open it this is how you would use it if you wanted to use this system to actually suck the water out because when you turn the water on as water is running through this entire system it's creating a suction on this piece and it'll actually draw water from your aquarium and you can use it to actually gravel vac and drain a tank to where all you gotta do is come over here turn the water off or leave it running to where you get the temperature right and you take this knob and you just twist it up and when it's in the closed position then water will actually be forced instead of going down through the bottom it'll actually come out this way and then you just and that fills your tank up and you can treat the water at the tank and the hose piece has an adapter too which has a rubber piece and it threads onto this fitting here and again you don't want to cross thread it and you want to make sure that it's properly tightened and after everything is tightened and all ready to go what I do is I'll leave this down and I'll turn my water on and I'll adjust it till I get the same temperature that's in my aquarium and then I'll fill it up and treat the tank when it's there but all you gotta do now
All you gotta do now is take this end piece that the hose is attached to and actually put it into your aquarium and let it dangle and when you turn the water on it'll actually just start filling the tank up and what you'll do is you go and grab your water conditioner and dose the entire tank gallon so as this is a hundred gallon fish tank then I will dump a hundred gallons worth of conditioner and now normally when the aquarium is filling up with water is while I'm waiting on it I won't leave it alone that way you don't forget about it and have a tank overflow but when this is doing this it allows me to go around my other aquariums in my fish room and clean algae off the glass maybe free to feed the fish take care of fry that I'm growing up and just enjoy the fish room in general but it's that's the best way about doing water changes you can do water changes using a siphoning hose and a water bucket and you just take the siphon hose fill up the water bucket stop siphoning carry the bucket dump it outside on your plants or down a drain or something and that works but it is a lot longer and a lot harder on your body to constantly be bending over and picking up a 30 to 50 pound bucket of water and that's what I used to do I used to do water changes in this fish room with all these fish tanks with just a bucket and a siphoning hose and the amount of time I save by taking this system and being able to suck water out and then put water back in without even touching a bucket or starting a siphon is so much better than having to go back and take hours longer with a bucket. Alright guys, as you can see the water is a lot cleaner in this aquarium and it still has a slight color tint to it but the carbon and the chemical filtration will take care of that later. But everything is running in this aquarium, and as you can see, the, it's actually a lot cleaner. And that's how I do my water changes on a bare bottom aquarium. And you want to make sure you do your water changes at a good, like on a set schedule. That way you can kind of keep the water at the optimal way so your fish has the best growth, the best life. Because they are living in their own pee and their own poop. They're basically living in their own toilet, but it's our job to keep the water clean and keep them healthy. So as long as you keep to a good schedule and do water changes and enough water, you'll do good. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something about doing water changes on a bear bomb aquarium. Maybe you've seen something in this video that you might found useful or helpful. and. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more content like this or other updates in the fish room, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay. And comment below how you do water changes and what type of schedule you're on and what you use to do water changes. Until next time, guys, stay safe, keep keeping fish. I'll see you next time.